as they get ready to entertain the Eagles of Moorhead State University. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Miles. Welcome to another edition of IPFW Basketball. I'm joined, as always, for these telecasts by former Mastodon Charlie Washington. And Charlie, the Mastodons got balanced scoring on Wednesday night. Four players in double figures led by Terry Collins with 24 points. Well, that's going to be a formula for the Don's success. They have to get balanced scoring. People like Terry Collins, Rick Wyan, and... Um, Big guy has him. Yeah, David Simon has to be in the basketball game for the Dons to be successful. And our point guard, Bo Bauer, has to distribute that basketball and do a little scoring himself when he needs to. The team that the IPFW is playing tonight, Moorhead State, they've defeated IPFW the last two years. They have a sensational senior forward by the name of Ricky Menard. Well, he hurt us a lot last year, and so uh, Chaz Marks yeah. also hurt us quite a bit last year. But we have to play good defense, um, solid distribution of the basketball, and Bo Bauer has to run this basketball team and not play like a freshman, and he certainly has those capabilities. It's IPFW taking on Moorhead State. Starting lineups and the opening tip-off just ahead on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is Mike Miles along with Charlie Washington getting ready to call the action in tonight's men's college basketball game featuring the Eagles of Moorhead State University and the IPFW Mastodons. Mastodons coming into this ball game after winning their first game of the season Wednesday night, 81-75 over Bowling Green State. Moorhead State coming into this contest with a record of 3-2 their last game was a week ago today where they defeated Texas A&M Corpus Christi 85-84 on a jump shot, 10-foot jump shot with nine seconds to go. Charlie Washington, the Dons, are on a roll with a winning streak of one. <laughs> well, you've got to start somewhere. And you uh, start, as we stated in the outset, balance. Balance is, this, is the key here, and there's a formula for the Don's success. And that formula is to get Terry Collins going, to get Rick Wyan going, to keep David Simon going, and Bo Bauer, get him going, distributing the basketball as well as... Here are, tonight, here are tonight's starting lineups. First for Moorhead State at one guard, Chaz Marks, a 6'3 senior from Paris, Kentucky. At one forward would be Josh Graham, a 6'5 senior from Flemingsburg, Kentucky. At another guard, Quinton Smith, a 5'11 freshman from Radcliffe, Kentucky. At one forward, Ricky Menard, a 6'4 senior from Mansfield, Ohio. And at the other forward, David Alu, David, a 6'6 senior from Liverpool, England. Moorhead State is coached by Kyle Macy. 4-2 here this year, 78-94 overall in his seventh season at the helm at Moorhead State. Now for the IPFW Mastodons at one guard, Terry Collins, a 6'1 junior from Fort Wayne Schneider High School. At a forward, Rick Wine, a 6'7 junior from Franklin Central High School in Indianapolis. At the point guard, Bo Bauer, a 6'3 freshman from Walton, Indiana. At forward, Keon Henderson, co-captain, 6'5 senior from Gary, Indiana. And at center, David Simon, a 6'10 junior from Vernon Hills, Illinois. 
Mastodon's coached by Doug Knoll in his fifth season here at IPFW. He's 35 and 7 here at IPFW, 167 and 194 overall in his 12 years of head coaching. Our official Phil Bova tosses the ball up, and the opening tap is controlled by the IPFW Mastodons. They are in the home white. IPFW moving the ball on the perimeter. Terry Collins inside the low post to Simon. First shot of the night. Oh, no good. Rebounded by David Alu, and here comes Moorhead State quickly on the attack. Looked like Simon may have gotten grabbed on the arm there, but didn't get the benefit of the call. IPFW on a man-to-man -man defense. Three-point shot on the way by Quentin Smith, no good. Here comes IPFW, back down to four for the second time on offense. Simon kicks it out. Dons, maybe a little patient. They can't get it inside, they'll just keep working the clock. Moorhead, man-to-man -man defense. Bauer, the freshman point guard. 10 on the shot clock. Collins shakes and bakes, pops a six-footer, yes! Terry Collins gets the first points of the game, and the Mastodons are on top, 2-0. And he's one Mastodon that can create his own shot. At times has trouble with the longer, lengthier, stronger defenders, but great job that time creating his own shot. Ricky Menard, what a player he is. He's hurt IPFW each of the last two years. Boy, he kicked it off. Three-point shot is good by Chez Marks. Marks averaging over 19 points a game. Just like that, Moorhead State on top, three to two. Henderson loses the ball, gets it to Simon. Basket will not count. They're gonna call a foul on David Allu. His first team first. IPFW will inbound it underneath their own basket. Bo Bauer, the freshman point guard from Lewis Cass High School, looking for somebody in white. Five second call. And truthfully, Charlie, I don't know who's at fault there. Bo not recognizing he's got five seconds or a teammate not getting open. I think a little bit of both, and those are the types of turnovers that we can't have, the totally unforced turnover. I guess in a sense it was forced. <laughs> Menard for three off the iron, no good, but Moorhead State with the offensive rebound. Smith, guarded by Bauer. Quentin Smith, fake to three. Menard will fire from long range. No good, but he's fouled and he will go to the line and shoot three. Fouls on David Simon. And that's not the kind of foul you want Simon getting that far, 20 uh, feet from the basket. Ricky Menard, leading scorer for Moorhead State, averaging 20.4 points a game coming in tonight. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Makes the first of his three free throw attempts. It is absolutely crucial, Mike, for David Simon to stay on the basketball court for the Dons to be successful. Very true. Second free throw good as well. He goes up on top, five to two. We've played two minutes and 18 seconds. Make it six to two. Menard, a perfect three of three at the line. Henderson gets the ball over midcourt. Keon has played well of late. Collins and Chez Marks doing battle. Don's trying to work it inside. Jump hook by Dave Simon is good. That's a good looking move by Simon. 6-4 our score. Moorhead State with a lead to basketball. Up and in for two is David Allu. He made it look too easy. Yeah, way too easy that time, getting the ball down low. Bauer again to Simon, kicks it out. Three-pointer by Bo Bauer is good. Great start by the freshman. The Dons trail by one, eight to seven. Menard, watched by Henderson. Ricky Menard. Inside, shot up and in by Josh Graham. 
And Simon somewhat fortunate to not get called for a second foul. There was contact. 10-7 our score. Moorhead stayed on top. We played three and a half minutes. Bauer wasn't ready for that pass from Wyan. Terry Collins, who had 24 points Wednesday night against Bowling Green. Fires a three. Off the rim, no. Tap up. They're going to call a foul on Wyan. Going over the back of Josh Graham. Mastodon's foul on number foul on two, Rick Wyan. Wyan. His first team second. So Moorhead State a win bounded. Quentin Smith. Speaking of Wine, we need to get him involved. The first few times he's not been involved in the offense to get him some touches. Near steal by Collins. Instead, Moorhead State has it. Menard, 12 footer off the rim. No, Wine with the rebound. Snatches it away from David Allu. Bauer looking for Simon. Can't find him, so he kicks it out. Almost like a 2 2 1 offense. Henderson watched by Menard as Morgan State. Man to man. Simon in the block. Spin move. Open as Henderson fires a three. Yes. Dion Henderson. We're tied at 10. Smith. Graham. Moorhead. Three-point shot, no good. Wine with the rebound as Marks missed the long-range shot. Bauer at the point. This pace, Mike, has to favor the Dons. They like to run, Charlie. Even though they got a couple of injuries. Two-man game. Simon shot up and in. Count it, and he's fouled. All you commits his second foul, team second. And David Simon, chance for the conventional three-point play. And I like the pace of this game. What it does is it keeps that defense playing a lot. And any defense at any level, if you make some good passes, they'll turn their heads and you get some good opportunities. Simon makes the free throw for the three-point play. And we've got our first media timeout of the night. 14, 1447 to go, our score, IPFW 13, Moorhead State 10. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Welcome back everybody to the Memorial Coliseum. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. 1447 left in the first half. IPFW on the strength of a David Simon three-point play leading Moorhead State 13-10. Charlie, IPFW shooting 71% and 5 of 7 from the floor. The tempo and everybody getting involved. We'd like to see Wyan get some touches to make sure he's involved. So far, this is exactly the formula, the type of formula that the Dons need. The only thing thus far that I haven't liked, that foul that Simon got <laughs> 20 feet away from the basket. He can't, he can't burn his five out there. Substitution for Moorhead State, Chad McKnight, a 6'7 junior from Lancaster, Ohio, replaces David Allu, who sits down with two personal fouls. Grandma inbound it to Quentin Smith. Here come the Eagles in their blue unis with gold and white trim. Traveling from right to left on your television screen. Marks watched by Collins. Moorhead State in a 1-3-1 offense. Graham backs down on Wyan. Shot up, partially touched by Simon. Tap, no good. Wyan with the rebound for IPFW. Collins motoring up the floor. Bauer for three off the mark. Looked good. Moorhead stayed on the fast break. Marks touched the end line. Violation, Moorhead State. 
I think that was a good running opportunity for the Dons. Kind of went into a secondary break. But still, I like the slower tempo. Right now, they're playing good basketball with this tempo, and I'd like to see them stick with it and take the opportunities if they come for the fast breaks. Pass from Wine intended for Henderson. Knocked away. Here comes Ricky Menard. Length of the floor. He puts it off the glass and in and draws the foul to boot. If you're going to foul him, make sure they don't get it up on the glass. Fouls on Rick Wine. That's his second team third. Did he get down the court quick or what? Ricky Menard. He's a senior. Kyle Thrasher and Justin Hawkins come in a lineup for IPFW. Hawkins, the freshman from Garrett High School. Thrasher, sophomore out of Pekin, Indiana. Menard completes the three-point play. Now Kyle Hankins, 6'3 junior from Bloomington, Indiana, comes in the lineup, replacing Chez Marks. Now my question on defense now, Mike, is who plays Menard if we stay in a man-to-man? -man? Steal by Menard, up in, count it, and he's fouled. Hawkins commits the foul. And that was just poor passing, which gave Moorhead State the turnover. Again, those turnovers will kill you every time. I don't care if you're playing lunchtime, pickup basketball, or NBA, WNBA, the turnovers will kill you. Unforced errors and points off those errors. Back to back, three point plays by Menard. Gives Moorhead State a 16 13 lead. And back the other way, IPFW drives to the basket. McKnight commits the foul. His first team third for Moorhead State. Terry Collins will be at the line. Terry Collins will be at the line shooting two. Terry for the year, an 85% free throw shooter. And we just saw an example of his strength and quickness. He's six foot tall playing in there with the trees, but he has the strength and the quickness to do that. He, once again, he does have trouble sometimes with stronger, longer athletic guys, but great job creating his own shots and opportunities. He makes them both. He now has four points, and the lead is cut to one at 16 to 15. 13.39 to go here in the first half at the Coliseum. Glad like to join us tonight here on College 56 Sports. The PFW in that man-to-man -man defense. McKnight kicks it out to Graham. Shake and bake time. Graham from eight feet. Yes. Josh Graham now has four points. The lead is back up to three. 18 to 15. Bauer trying to get away from Smith. Collins faked the three, drove in the lane, and drew the foul. He's on Hankins, his first, team fourth. Fouls are starting to add up, Charlie. Well, and that's the kind of matchup, uh, Hankins on Collins, that's the kind of matchup you want for Collins. Um, Hankins, I don't think, has the quickness and the strength to challenge Collins. Collins for three, yes. Off the pass. Well, thank you, Terry, for making me look a little smart. <laughs> We're tied at 18. Back come the Eagles. Menard for three. Ricky Menard. He's already got 12 points. 21-18 our score. Moorhead stayed on top. 12.38 to go here in the first half. Collins, Simon, they kick it out. Simon in the block, spin move off the glass and in. Nice move, nice move. Thrasher got that pass out. He has to be ready to shoot that basketball if he kicks it back out, though. And back the other way as Menard draws the foul on Thrasher. Wow. About a minute ago, I was just about to say we're holding Menard in check. But in about the last 60 or 70 seconds, he's put 12 up. Count the bucket as well. We have a timeout called by Doug Knoll. We have a 30 second timeout. You see, we'll take a quick break. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out, maybe or something, if you had time. 
I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Oh, okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. There's a replay of that last uh, inside move by Menard, Charlie. He's good. Well, and that's what I questioned um, when Keon Henderson went out of the basketball game. If we stayed man-to-man, -man, who would guard him? And I don't think that's a uh, very good matchup for Thrasher. Free throw by Menard is good. That's three conventional three-point plays he has made now. And he has 15 points. A four-point eagle lead at 24 to 20. Like a 2-2-1 two, two, press, and there you go. Get it right to the middle. That's how you break any type of defense now, getting the basketball to the middle. The old UCLA press. <laughs> Hawkins, watched by Smith. Looking for somebody in white to get open. Something IPFW has to improve is moving without the basketball. Three on the shot clock. Bauer fires up a three. Yes! Oh! Oh, Bauer with a half a dozen thanks to a pair of trays. And we're tied at oh, no, it's a 24-23 lead. And a shot like that will give you all types of confidence. You, when you, you're not in rhythm, but you can still nail it. That puts you in a rhythm right away then. Hankins dishes off. McKnight for the easy layup. That wasn't pretty. Looked like a lot of illegal movement there, but uh, no call on <laughs> either way. 26-23 our score. Eagles on top as we uh, near the 11 minute mark. Quickly played first half. Collins lob pass for Simon and Simon jams it. Oh yeah, that's what he's in the basketball game. Keeping him on the court and being effective. Very important once again for the Dons. Smith. Looking inside, Burns is in the lineup now. McKnight from 18 feet. Chad McKnight made a layup, now he makes a jumper. Four points in a row. That's 28-25. Typically you say you want that guy to take that shot, but once someone gets a layup, that adrenaline and confidence shoots straight up. <laughs> Hawkins, watched by Menard. Skip pass, out of bounds. Right over our head. Don't worry, Mike. Come from under the table. I'll protect you. <laughs> We've got an official's timeout. 10-23 left in the first half. Our score. The Eagles of Moorhead State 28. The Mastodons of IPFW 25. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. to the Memorial Coliseum, everybody. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. Uh, Charlie, as uh, Bernie Lomo, or our executive producer, said uh, in our ears, we're on pace for a 100-point game tonight. Yeah, and once again, you know, the tempo, I, I, I'd i say slow it down. Uh, we're getting If we get into a running, a track meet type of a situation, I don't think that's to the Don's favor. Uh, slow the tempo down and take the fast break opportunities as they come. Another substitution for Moorhead State, Ramon Kelly, 6'4", junior from Belleville, Illinois. So you got Kelly in the lineup along with McKnight, Corey Burns, Kyle Hankins, and Chaz Marks. Mastodons with the basketball. Tyler Clevenger, who's in the lineup for the first time tonight, gives it off to Keon Henderson. Wyan back in the game as well. Four fires up a jumper and hits it along two. Great to see him coming to the basketball game and get into the scoring column. Nice fake. Recognize the clock shot, uh, shot clock is running down and nailed a jumper. Marks to McKnight, watched by Simon. He kicks it back out. 
Hankins from six feet, and he's fouled by Jim Kesnick on the way up. Oh, they're going to call offensive foul. I take it back. Offensive foul on Hankins. I think we caught a break there, and uh, we'll take it. That's his second. Team fifth, IPFW with a chance to retake the lead. They're down one, 28-27. Ball off of Henderson as he and Marks were battling for it. And the official said it's Moorhead State basketball. Fifth turnover now on IPFW. I'm not sure about that one. If you don't call the foul, the bump on that, I think you at least have to give that ball back to the Dons. And now they're going to call a foul on Keon Henderson. And boy, that's one of those touch fouls. For Keon, it's his first, team sixth. One more and Moorhead State will be in the bonus. Eric Bergstrom, the seven-foot freshman from Minnesota, replacing David Simon in the Mastodon lineup. Eric got his first collegiate start Wednesday night against uh, Bowling Green. And Doug Knoll looking, uh, showing some confidence in the young man, putting him in with Simon playing well. Baseline drive, shot is missed by Hankins, rebounded by IPFW, here comes Clevenger. Kesnick, 12-footer, yes! Senior from Pewaukee gets his first points of the night. And that's his game, catching the ball in the rhythm. Usually it's a little farther out than that, but him catching the ball in rhythm, getting that jump shot off, being ready to shoot, that's great for him. Hankins, watched by Tyler Clevenger. Marks averaging 19 points a game. Pass intended for Hankins, knocked out of bounds by Clevenger. Good defense by the Winchester graduate. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Eagles are wind bounded underneath their own basket. Mastodons lead 29-28 as we're under nine minutes left here in the first half. Long jumper is short by Kelly, rebounded by the Mastodons. They're up the floor quickly. Clevenger for three, thought he was hit. Shot is short. Wyant tries to keep it in play. Bodies go flying all over the place. It'll be more head state basketball. Good effort, though, by Wyant and Clevenger. Great effort that time. Uh, Clevenger looked like he had a pretty good look at the basket. It wasn't to be. I think he thought he had his arm hacked slightly, but he said no. Hankins. Marks, three-pointer on the way. Off the rim, no. McKnight with the offensive rebound. Loses it. Good defense by Clevenger momentarily. Moorhead State recovers, however. Hankins has it. Slow it up, at least for the moment. McKnight. Lob pass from McKnight underneath. Nice pass from Hankins to McKnight, and Chad has six points. Moorhead State takes the lead, 30 to 29. Clevenger looking for somebody in white. Wyant wants to drive baseline, cut off by Kelly. 12 on the shot clock. Wyant, long NBA three, short. Kesnick with the offensive rebound. He's fouled by Hankins as he tried to go to his left. Burns picks up the foul. Right now, the Macedon offense is being pushed out further than they'd like to be because there's not really a strong inside presence there. Without Simon in a basketball game, they aren't able to get good looks inside. They have an official's timeout with 7.21 to go. Moorhead State leading 30 to 29. Gives us a chance to invite you to join Coach Doug Knoll on College 56 for the Doug Knoll Show with highlights and perspective from Coach Knoll and his guests. Your truly host, Mike Miles, opens up the show on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock, Fridays at 5.30, and Saturdays at noon. It's the Doug Knoll Show here on College Cable Access Channel 56. We have a replay here of that long shot. Hit the front of the rim, and look at Kesnick with that good offensive board, Charlie. Hankins definitely got the arm. Yeah, it's good to see him um, 
on the rebounding uh, side of things. Uh, not typically his forte, but hey, we certainly love to see him getting on the boards. If they did call it on Hankins, that should be his. Well, they called it on Burns instead. I'm sorry, they called it. I thought it was Hankins, but it was Burns that got the, uh, the foul, his first. 721 left here in the first half. Right now, IPFW hitting 69% of their shots, 11 of 16. Moorhead State, 58% of their shots in the floor, 11 of 19. Ricky Menard with 15 points, leading all scores. IPFW led by Dave Simon with nine. It'll be uh, IPFW basketball. Henderson, Kesnick, Wyant, Clevenger, and Terry Cowens on the floor for IPFW. It looks to be a 2-3 two, three, two, three zone. Almost like a matchup. Henderson for three, short, rebounded by Graham. Menard's back in the lineup. Marks moving to his left. Menard thought about a shot, kicked it back out instead. Turnover, Henderson to Collins. Let's slow it up. Lob pass inside off the glass. Intended for Kesnick. Picked off by Moorhead State. Menard to Meeks. And Meeks misses the bunny. But Menard comes back with the follow up. Menard now with 17 points. And it's a three point Moorhead State lead 32 to 29. Kesnick. Intent to play a two-man game. Spin move off of Burns. Shot up, no. Rebounded by Graham. Good luck. Shot just didn't drop. Menard for three. No good. Collins marks. Fight for the rebound. Graham in the paint. Offensive foul. Josh Graham of Moorhead State. And Graham's a load. I don't know how Tyler Clevenger took that charge, but he's not a little guy. First foul on Graham. Comes with 5.55 left. Bo Bauer, David Simon back in the lineup for IPFW. Now, Mike, I'd like to see Simon. Simon on the post as we look at the replay there. Can we see? No, couldn't see him actually take the charge again. But I'd like to see Simon in the low post and then get Kessner's job on the perimeter where he's more comfortable. Get them both in the game at the same time. The old twin towers that we talked about last year. Collins and Wyan. Wyan, move it around. Power for another three off the short. But Wyan gets the rebound and calls a 30 second timeout. Smart play by Rick Wyan, saves a possession for IPFW. And that time Bo Bauer just getting back into the basketball game. It's tough to come right off the bench and take a three point shot. Uh, but he was open, but I'd like to see him get a layup and get up and down the court before you take that kind of shot coming uh, straight off the bench. You see Doug Nolte talking to his troops. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 534 on the game clock. The Dons are down 32-29. They don't necessarily need a tray. They are 4 of 10 from long range so far. But I, think I, I, I like your idea, Charlie. Well, I, I think it's very important right now to uh, treat each possession, you know, as, as gold here. Play good defense, and then when you get the basketball back, get it down to Simon. I think they've been pushing us out two or three feet uh, further than we'd like to be on, on, on the perimeter, but with Simon back in the game, maybe we can get the ball down low and draw those defenders in and have more open uh, looks and lanes to the basket because of the presence down low. Bauer gets it inbounds to Henderson. Keon brings it back out. Almost like a 1-2-2 two, two offense for the Dons right now. Bauer, long three, had to do it, he hits it! Third tray for Bo Bauer as the shot clock was winding down. We're tied at 32. Well, well that's a new offense now. Just let the <laughs> shot clock run down and then give Bauer the ball and, you know, let him not recognize it to the last moment. Graham underneath. Heck, knocked away by Simon. The remain Moorhead State basketball. 19 on the shot clock. Brandon Jennings, sophomore. 
from Canal Winchester, Ohio, making his first appearance of the night for IPFW. And Simon again fortunate not to get that second foul. Marks top of the key. Looking for Menard. Up and in. Boy, Menard is strong. Yeah, he's one of those players that gives us trouble. That's six, anywhere from 6'4", six, 6'5", six, 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 player, rangy and wiry. Anderson up top. Cross court pass to Jennings. Oh, looks like more heads back in there, man to man defense. Henderson on the drive, short tap. Oh, with it. what a slam oh, by Keon Henderson. Oh, the home team. The home team, man. And Moorhead State throws it away on the other end. The knee brace showing no effect on them, his leaping ability. The senior from Gary, Indiana, got the offensive board and a putback slam. We're tied at 34. Bauer looking for somebody. 15 on the shot clock. Terry Collins watched by Chaz Marks. You see any shaking bacon coming? Three-pointer, short. Rebound, Ricky Menard. Eagles on the run. Menard, coast to coast. Before the shot, they're going to call a blocking foul on Bo Bauer. He is so quick uh, with the basketball. Oh. They're going to call it on Collins instead. That's the first foul on Terry Collins tonight. There's a replay, Charlie. Oh, I don't know if he got the feet set or not. They caught it on. They called it on, on Collins, Collins, but on reach. Bauer was the one who was holding his ground. Maybe they called a reach of some kind that we didn't see. And uh, Keon Henderson goes um, out of the basketball game a few weeks ago. A tremendous article on Keon, a uh, tremendous young man, uh, ordained minister, yep. a tremendous athlete. Menard made the first, missed the second. Simon's got the rebound for the Dons. Hawkins back in the lineup. They're on the run. Looking for Simon in the box. Oh, they're going to go offensive foul. Nice acting job by Graham. Simon picks up his second. And we've got an official's timeout. 3.39 left until halftime. Our score, Moorhead State 35, IPFW 34. Let's take a break. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Can you see world-famous writers, performers, musicians, and other artists up close and personal right here at IPFW? On the next edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll tell you about three very special series that take place at IPFW every year. You'll learn all about the omnibus, visiting writers, and Plogster series. Join me, Jeanette Liu, as we learn the history of each event and how the guest artists are chosen. Watch IBFW up close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56. Back at the, back at the Coliseum, here's that last move, last play. The flop. The Bill Lambeer flop. And then you see the look on Dave Simon's face saying, what in the world do you mean a charge on me? Second foul picked up by Simon, and uh, I got a feeling he may sit on the last 339. If he does, it'll be a challenge, I believe, probably for Eric Bergstrom. Sure, and before we took the timeout, I was uh, noticing Coach Noel has a very important decision, you know, to make the Dons are playing well right now. Simon had been playing well. He has two fouls right now. Do you want to risk that 339? Do you want to risk that third foul in the first half? Or do you try to sweat it out with someone else in the middle? And it looks like... He's on the floor. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised. I, in a game as close as this one has been, I don't know if it's conventional wisdom, and I'm certainly not as smart as Doug Nolan. I haven't coached nearly as long or at a higher level, but I wonder. He's going to ride the Rapids with uh, Dave Simon on the floor with two fouls. Menard kicks it out to Meeks. Meeks averaging 19 points a game. He's only scored three so far tonight. Graham trying to drive on Simon. Oh, he got a break. Missed it. Menard, he's going to fire a three. No good. Let's see if they're going to call Jennings or if they're... I think they're going to call Jennings as he and Graham locked arms. That's what they did. 
first foul on Brandon Jennings, ninth team foul. McKnight is going to be at the line. I thought it was Graham. I guess it was McKnight that was uh, doing the body work. And we have to have that rebound. We need to box out and get every opportunity that we can. McKnight at the line, one and one, makes the first. There's more hit state, a two point lead, 36 34. Chance for his eighth point. And he gets it. McKnight, a perfect two of two. Again, that 2-2-1 two, two, looks to be a uh, kind of token pressure versus an aggressive trapping defense. Just break it and get it over midcourt. Bauer in the lane. Threw it too hard for Simon to handle. Now we got Kesnick in for Simon. So Doug Noah played with fire for about 41 seconds and got away with it. Simon goes to the bench with his two fouls. And to bring him in, I would love to have seen this at least go to him in the post um, if you're going to take that kind of a risk. Whitney Smith, watched by Bauer. Graham, picked up by Kessner. Well, 1 3 1 offense put on by Moorhead State. Now they got Men uh, I'm sorry, it's Smith with the ball. There's Menard. Eight in the shot clock. Menard wanted to do his dance. Then he traveled with the basketball. And that's exactly what he did, Mike, a dance. The Moorhead State shuffle is performed by Ricky Menard. Turnover number four on the Eagles. Wyant back in the lineup for Jennings. So you've got Wyant, Collins, Bauer, Justin Hawkins, and Jim Kesnick on the floor for IPFW. And I like that uh, substitution because you do need the offense uh, in the game right now. I wish we had more somewhere, a low post presence, and then we can open up our outside shooters. Jerry Collins to Wyant on the wing. Kesnick in the block. And work it around, try to get somebody open. Two-man game, Bauer, Kesnick over McKnight, shot up, long, rebounded Graham. Eagles on the run. Chez Marks looking for somebody in blue. Gets it to McKnight. Now they got it in Menard's hands. Menard, six-foot jumper's good. Menard now, 22 first-half points. That last time down, Mike, uh, Kessner's had, and he, right now he still has, he had 6'4", Ramon Kelly, and I don't, I question if he's 6'4", and we didn't try to take advantage of that. Got a push foul, going to be called on Quentin Smith. His first team's eighth. Comes with a minute 31 left until oh, wow. halftime. Bo Bauer, the freshman from Lewis Pass High School at the line. Henderson comes in for Wyan. Keon with five points. Rick Wyan with only two, as we saw the replay there. Bo Bauer, the freshman point guard. In and out, no good. McKnight with the rebound. That's Chance like a missed. turnover. Missing the front end of a one and one is almost a turnover. Graham in the black, shot up no, but he draws a foul and he'll shoot two. Hawkins picks up his second foul. Team 10th. Wow. FW picked him up in a hurry. So Josh Graham at the line for two. First one is good. Boy, Moorhead State. 10 of 11 at the foul line right now. And they're creeping away. This is uh, anywhere from a one to three point game for a long time. And uh, they're starting to creep. Now it's six, 40 to 34. Missed. They're going to call a violation, I believe, on Kesnick. They say Kesnick got in too soon, so he gets to shoot the free throw over. The old NBA, three to make two. Oh, that's an oldie but goodie. Graham with the reprieve, misses that one. Boy, did Henderson get up in the air to get that rebound. He's showing no ill effects from uh, the injury that he had, the one of many that he's had over his career at IPFW. Yeah, now kicks it out to Bauer. 105 left to go in a half. Don's trail by six, 40 to 34. 
Imperative, they cut into that deficit before they go to the locker room. 10 on the shot clock, Barra with the ball. Gives it to Collins, time for shaking big time for Terry Collins. Driving and he draws the foul on Smith. 49 seconds left. Terry Collins will go to the line. Very important at this level, uh, Mike, to have players on your team and on the floor that can create their own shots. And Terry Collins is one of those uh, people. And particularly, it's important for IPFW with uh, Carruthers not in the lineup tonight at all. You get a look at uh, Doug Knoll, Joe Pachota, his associate head coach, talking to Henderson and Bauer. Collins, this is a one and one situation. Terry, two for two so far tonight at the line. Looking for point number eight, and he gets it. So Terry Collins cuts the lead to five, now with a chance to cut it to four. Probably the one guy you want to have at the line in this situation. Knocks it down, he's and four of four. Now we need to stop, and we're guaranteed to at least get the basketball back. And now Kyle Macy calls a 30-second timeout. They had to use it or they would have lost it. Up to 46 seconds to go. Okay, you're in the huddle, Charlie Washington. What's stuck no telling here? What are you going to tell the, uh, the troops? Well, I'm putting in a play right now. I need a defensive stop, and I'm putting in a play. If, if I don't get a fast break opportunity, I have something already uh, set for the um, upcoming possession. But defense is, uh, he's talking about defense. I guarantee you that in the huddle right now. And on uh, the other, other end, you know that Kyle Macy wants to get the ball into Ricky Menard's hands. And th yeah, there's no question about that. He's been uh, tremendous. Actually, he seems fairly quiet, but he's just gotten his points in bunches. But he's so quick with the basketball, as we see the uh, replay of the foul a time by Ramon Kelly. 46.1 seconds left here in the first half. Moorhead State with the basketball and a four-point lead. Hankins back in the lineup. He's got the ball, and he's going to walk it up and burn some clock. It's a 14-second differential between game clock and shot clock. Defense! 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 Looks to be uh, Almost looks like the old North Carolina, Carolina four, four corners. corners. <laughs> Phil Ford ran so effectively some years ago. Hankins looking for Menard, doesn't find him yet. Looking like it's it over to Marks. Five on the shot clock, Marks nearly walked. Menard, 17 footer, short, rebounded. Collins has a knocked out of bounds, but it is IPFW ball. And that's what you want, that's exactly what you want. A good defensive stop, and now that last possession to get you going on an emotional high going to the locker room. Hawkins inbounds at the power. I'm surprised Moorhead didn't put pressure on the ball. 10 seconds to go. Collins, he'll take the last shot. That's just a wide open man underneath. Shake and bake, Collins, no! Menard with the rebound, one second, lets it fly from 50 feet. Off the glass, no good. And we've come to the end of the first 20 minutes of action. As the teams head to the locker room, our halftime score, Moorhead State 40, IPFW 36. Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne presents Spotlight on IPFW. An up close look at some of the hidden treasures on our campus. Our spotlight today is shining brightly on the IPFW Herb Center, directed by Professor Bruce Kingsbury. I'll never see. This is a timber rattlesnake. This is our biggest poisonous snake, but it is also relatively uncommon and uh, it occurs in some of the for forested hills of, of, uh, of southern Indiana. This is a male, so this is a, this is a smallish male. They get quite a bit bigger than this. Biology professor and herpetologist Bruce Kingsbury never outgrew his childhood love of creepy crawly things and has made the study of endangered reptiles and amphibians in the Midwest his career focus. That interest led him to want to start some sort of conservation center on campus. A discussion with Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Susan Hanna, resulted in him submitting a proposal for what is now one of several centers of excellence at IPFW, the Center for Reptile and Amphibian Conservation and Management, otherwise known as the HERP Center. The mission of the HERP Center is to promote the conservation and understanding of reptiles and amphibians through research, education, and outreach. We conduct a, a variety of research projects on species that are 
endangered in, at, at some level in the Midwest. And a lot of times what we're doing is finding out about their basic ecology, what their habitat needs are, how they move around, what sort of impacts there are in terms of uh, human activity. And then we work with agencies such as the Fish and Wildlife Service or the Department of Natural Resources to try to figure out what might be done a little bit differently to help uh, protect those animals. The main focus of the Herp Center's research is on endangered reptiles of the Midwest. Studies have been conducted on many species of turtles, frogs, toads, salamanders, and snakes. Today, we're focusing on the snakes. We've already seen a timber rattlesnake, which is generally found in south central Indiana in the Bloomington area. Now it's time for another species of rattlesnake, the eastern Massasagua, which is found in northern Indiana. Massasauga lives in wetlands which are kind of uh, mucky and hard to walk through and, and not that many people go out in them and, uh, and they're also rare and so we don't see them very often. Even those of us who study them struggle to find them. We have a, a bias that benefits us in terms of finding them and that we use radio telemetry to track them around this not only allows us to find the same animal over and over again for years at a time, it also leads us to other individuals. With a snake, we definitely have some problems. There, there isn't much of a neck, and in fact, if you did put something on the outside of the snake, they would have trouble crawling around because they are reliant on their slender body form to get around the way they do. And because of that, we place the transmitters internally in the snake. We actually do a surgical operation and the antenna runs up underneath the skin and when we're done you can't tell that the transmitter is in there. In addition to doing research on endangered species, the Herp Center also does projects which involve GIS or geographic information systems. GIS provides a computer-based multi-layered picture of an area of interest which allows an investigator to examine how different spatial features interact. As an example, here's an aerial photograph of a specific area. Another layer shows the different kinds of habitat at the site, and the final layer shows the location of animals found there. Kingsbury says having this information on the computer helps researchers figure out what's going on across the landscape. One of the things the center is asked to track is pollution. There's different kinds of, of pollution. There's point source pollution and there's non-point so, point source solution. And what we're helping these agencies with is methods for visualizing the non-point source pollution. What, what is non-point source solution? That's pollution where you like runoff from agricultural fields or something like that where you don't have a pipe or something like that where you can go there and say yeah this is where this pollutant is coming from. In fact it, it's distributed across an entire watershed and it's only by looking at the whole thing that you can actually see where the problem is. The center also maintains a website at herpcenter.ipfw.edu, which is filled with educational and outreach information. We as a public should care about wildlife and about doing what we can to protect it. And what, if we do the work to figure out how to protect things, we often find that it doesn't take that much of, a, of a, an effort on our part to, to protect these kinds of animals, often it's just minor adjustments in, in terms of timing or in terms of, uh, of land use and that we can largely go about our business. A lot of people are afraid of snakes and uh, typically that's really unfounded. And it could be because of some experience they, that they had when they were younger. It could be because of some biblical implications of what snakes are or what they represent. And a lot of times it's because Snakes are a little bit unpredictable and strange looking because they have no legs and, and uh, what, is, what is strange to us might also make us afraid. But most of the snakes, in fact, in terms of a, a count of snakes, I'd say uh, almost all snakes are totally harmless and that if anything they might bite you if you pick them up. 
but even that would be, uh, I'd rather get a, a snake bite than a scraped knee or something like that. And with regard to the poisonous snakes, what we have found and it, that what others have found as well is that these snakes are not aggressive and in fact unless you catch them out in the open they'll do everything that they can to to stay hidden and you can stand next to them you can step over them you can even bump them and they'll hold still and they'll just hope that you don't notice them they're very intent on staying hidden and they would rather just uh, have you keep going the way you were going and not mess with you, then vice versa. And for Kingsbury, the best part will always be working with the creepy crawlies. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pet band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Where can you see world-famous writers, performers, musicians, and other artists up close and personal? Right here at IPFW. On the next edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll tell you about three very special series that take place at IPFW every year. You'll learn all about the omnibus, visiting writers, and Plogsterth series. Join me, Jeanette Liu, as we learn the history of each event and how the guest artists are chosen. Watch IPFW Up Close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56. Welcome back, everybody, to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you on this Saturday evening. It's halftime here in our game featuring the Eagles of Moorhead State, PFW Mastodons. And at the break, the Mastodons trail Moorhead State 40 to 36. Charlie Washington. One question I need to ask in a hurry. What does IPFW have to do to stop one Ricky Menard? As strange as it sounds, he has a quiet 22 <laughs> in one half of basketball. So I, I, I'm not real sure. He's uh, quick. He's rangy. Uh, he's a slasher. Um, and he's a pretty good shooter. So I, I'm not sure. The Dons have done just about everything that they need to do uh, to stay in this basketball game and obviously win this basketball game. The one thing that really hasn't happened, Rick Wyand um, is about the only one of the keys that I've seen that have not really gotten going and gotten into the basketball game. The other keys that we talked about at the outset have pretty much happened. I think one thing we also need to mention in case our viewers haven't noticed it, IPFW is missing one key component tonight in sophomore Quentin Carruthers, uh, the sophomore from Flint, Michigan, dislocated his shoulder late in the ball game Wednesday night against Bowling Green, and he told me he's going to be out from somewhere between two and four weeks. The shoulder popped out. They were able to pop it back in, 
but Q is on the bench tonight in civvies and with the uh, sling on his arm, and he is probably the one guy that, had he been healthy, he would have been guarding Ricky Menard because Q is quick as a cat and has the uh, ability to jump, run, and whatever. So he is missing, and I think in his absence, Kian Henderson at first, and then others have been trying to stop Ricky Menard. If we get a look at the halftime stats, you can see Moorhead State hitting 48% of their field goals, 14 of 29. They're 2 of 10 from three-point range. They have four assists, 15 rebounds. They're 10 of 12 at the foul line for uh, 80, 80 what, 83%. And they've turned the ball over four times. IPFW, 52% from the floor. That's great. That's great. 13 of 25, nearly 50% from three-point range, 5 of 12. They've distributed the ball more. They've got 10 assists. They've got 12 rebounds. They're 5 of 6, also 83% at the line. But they've turned the ball over six times. And uh, against Moorhead State, you can't turn it over that much because they get out on the break real quickly. And three, about three of those six turnovers were the kind of the variety that you just threw the ball, basically gave the basketball away. Uh, there are going to be some forced errors, but when you have unforced errors, that's going to hurt you. And one of the key components to look at in any level of basketball, once again, whether it's pickup or NBA, any level, points off the turnovers. And right now, points off turnovers favors. Wow, Moorhead State, 11 to nothing. 11 to nothing. Yeah, because a lot of those turnovers were thrown. Uh, the ball was tipped away or thrown right to them, and they went down and scored right away. And a couple times, um, those 22 points that Menard has, a couple were off steals and then fouled as he was uh, scoring baskets. Taking a look at some of the individual numbers for Moorhead State, as we said before, Ricky Menard, 22 points. 7 of 13 from the floor, 1 of 5 from three-point range, 7 of 8 at the free throw line. He's the only eagle in double figures. 8 points um, for Chad McKnight, 3 of 3 from the floor, 2 of 2 at the foul line. 5 points, as you'll see a, a replay there, 5 points from Josh Graham, and he's big and bulky inside. He's 2 of 5 from the floor, 1 of 2 at the free throw line. Three points from Chess Marks, and he's averaging over 19 points a game, so it's a good defensive job there, stopping one of the, the right. two uh, big eagles there. Two points from David Alyu, and David sat down early as he picked up two fouls in the first five minutes of play. Here's another one of replay. Those turnovers. And you see the breakout. Menard to Marks. Missed the shot, but Menard got the offensive rebound on fault Wyatt and Kesnick and got the putback. So we can't, you know, IPFW's got to stop that. Uh, let's see real quickly. They're the only players that scored for Moorhead State. IPFW, nobody in double figures. Terry Collins and Dave Simon and Bo Bauer, all three with nine points apiece. Interesting setup. Simon, four of five from the floor. Collins, two of five, including one of three from three-point range, but he's four of four at the free throw line. And Bo Bauer, three of five off from three-point range, including one as a shot clock ran down. He did that against Kent State as well. Yeah, I think, well, two out of his three, I think. Yeah, <laughs> as the shot clock ran down. down yeah. So they're, they're the three leading scorers for IPFW, nine points apiece, five points from Keon Henderson, two points apiece from Jim Kesnick and Rick Wyan. And Rick Wyan had 15 points Wednesday night against Bowling Green. He's a guy that, if he gets it on, he can score inside, he can score outside. He's pretty much firmly entrenched now playing a four. And uh, he's got to come through here in the second half. It'll be Moorhead State basketball. Got the original starters back in the lineup for both teams. That's Marks, Graham, Smith, Menard, and uh, let's see, McKnight. Oh, okay, McKnight's in. I'm sorry, he's not at did not Okay, McKnight's on the floor. IPFW, Bauer, Henderson, Wyan, Simon, and Cowens. And here we go. 20 minutes to go. IPFW down by four, looking for their second win in a row. All right, very important here to get a good defensive stop and to go down and get a bucket. Nice feed, marks to McKnight. Great. McKnight draws the charge. Great job that time by Bauer. A little bit of an acting job, but they old as that one anyway. Second foul on McKnight. 
comes 14 seconds into the second half. Now, what you want to do coming out, get the ball inside to Simon. He's been out of the basketball game, hadn't had many touches, obviously, from the bench. So look inside and get him involved in the offense right away. Henderson, Bauer. There's, there's Simon in the block. Turn around, 12-footer off the rim, no. And Wyand, oh, they're going to call a touch foul on Wyand, saying he was over the back on all you. Rick Wyand picks up his third. Now that's a shot David Simon can get at any time within the shot clock. I want to see him a little closer to the basket with his back to the basket. I'm not saying he could never face the basket, but get him going inside the post. And then later on, within, when that confidence gets going, take that shot. Smith, watched by Bowers. IPFW is the man-to-man -man defense. Menard. See if anyone can slow him down here in the second half. All you trying to get that fourth foul on Wyan. Banks it off the glass and in. Second field goal for David All you. And it's a six-point Moorhead State lead. We played one minute here in the second half. Extremely important for the Dons not to fall behind too much. Henderson with a nice baseline jumper. Great quick move by Keon Henderson. And one way to slow Menard down is, hey, make him play a little defense. Moorhead State comes right back on a bucket by Marks. 44-38. Henderson. Lob pass Simon in the block. Jams it home. There you go. That's what we need. Way to clear that backside out so there's no help. We need it four where we started some almost two minutes ago. Menard, three-pointer, short. But the offensive rebound by Graham, and he nearly lost it out of bounds. Offensive rebounds killing IPFW right now. Marks, watched by Collins. Even a bad team is going to hurt you if you continue to give them two to three uh, shots. And Inside feed, off the glass, and in is all you. All you, four of his six points coming here in the second half. And by no means is Moore, Moorhead State a bad team. And if you give them two or three opportunities, they're going to uh, hurt you. 46-40. Collins needs to open up. Bauer trying to find Simon in the block. Can't get him. Wyant. Long two, no good. Menard with the rebound. Wyatt just having an off night right now. Yeah, just not in any, any type of rhythm. Nice feed, Menard to all you. On offense or defense. Eight points for all you now. Thrasher at the scorer's table. Terry Collins comes back and hits his jumper. Now this is not the kind of tempo IPFW wants and uh, Moorhead State stalking, they want to push it. Under 17 minutes, Menard, another three. That was poor uh, defense by Simon that time, not calling the pick, not only that, and not stepping out. Turnover, IPFW, here comes Menard. Coast to coast, off the glass and in. And Doug Noel calls timeout, 16.40 to go. His Mastodons are now trailing 53-42. And just like that, you have double digits. We're going to take a break. 16.40 left. Equals up 53.42. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 2,400 a month. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Charlie, we're watching Moorhead State run their offense to perfection here. Menard, that long three, swish. That was a pretty good uh, pick set that time on uh, Henderson. And one thing um, I do, as we see a uh, nice jump shot that time uh, created by Terry Collins, one thing the folks in the NBA do do well. They play the pick and roll, roll pretty well usually. And that time is a pretty good screen set. And whoever's man sets that screen, step out there. And Simon didn't do a good enough job of it that time. 
Kyle Thrasher in the IPFW lineup replacing Rick Wyand. Now more hit stake with some pressure. Bauer nearly lost it. Collins crank it off just slightly. Eagles going for the kill here with 16 and a half to go. Collins watched by Menard. Up top, Henderson. TC just inside the three-point arc. Off the rim, no. Rebounded Smith. The Eagles want to run. Smith throws it away. Pass intended. I believe for Menard. It's a big possession right here. Need to get under uh, double digits. Bauer wants to drive. Thrasher wants to spin on all you off the glass. No. More hit stick. Menard comes up with the ball. Three pointer by March. No good. Offensive tap. No good. Thrasher with the board for the Dons. They dodged two bullets there. Yeah, Menard came down on the one man fast break. Collins missed the shot and draws the foul. Actually, he commits the foul. As he and Ches Marks went after it. That's two fouls on Terry Collins. And we have an official timeout, so we'll take a break as well. 15.35 left in the contest. It's the Eagles 53, the Macedons 42, and you're watching IBFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. Coliseum, you can see Terry Collins on a replay. Stopping, popping, firing a long shot, no good. Thrasher tried for the rebound there, Charlie, and then you see Terry trying to get the ball. He and March collide. And they call Terry for the foul, his second. And that, no uh, disrespect at all to Thrasher, but that's a situation where you miss a, a guy like uh, Carruthers. And we have Carruthers, we have Keon Henderson, and we have uh, Terry Collins somewhat. Those are quick guys who can create their shots and can play up and down a style with people like um, Menard and uh, Marks. Well, the Dons need to play some defense. They are down 11. Four-point differential at halftime, but Dallas State's gotten out of the blocks quick here to start the second half. Let's see where Burns is in the lineup along with Kelly. So Kyle Mason making some personnel moves as well. And the Dons look to be in uh, what looks like a 3-2, a 3-2 zone. Kelly for three, way off the mark, rebounded by Collins. Imperative for IPFW to score this time down. They've got to get it into single digits to get some confidence back. Collins, blocked by Marks, looking around on the other side. Bauer looking for Thrasher to cut, he doesn't cut. Simon back in the lineup and he fires a long range shot, no good. Rebound fought for, Thrasher gets it. Kicks it back out. Bauer faked the three. Collins will fire a three, no. Henderson is fouled, trying to get the offensive rebound. Foul's gonna be on Roman Kelly, his first. Team second here in the second half. Started to see a little bit of the replay. Ooh, Don's nearly lost the throw in. Bo Bauer up top now almost looks like a matchup zone for Moorhead. Simon has it nearly knocked away. The two man game and there's a reach in foul on all you. That'll be David's third. Third on the team here in the second half as well. They're in what looks like to be a 2 3 zone, and you can go to the post against a 2 3 zone, but you can't dribble that. Uh, Simon, once he catches that basketball, he has to make a decision and go right with that nice little jump hook, lefty or righty, but putting it on the floor is not an option. Collins missed the three. Another offensive rebound for Thrasher. Back to back offensive boards for the sophomore. 
Bauer shake and bake, foul line extended, fires and hits. And just like anywhere else, if we give a good team two or three shots at the basket, they're going to get it. Now a nine point deficit, 53-44. Marks on the perimeter, they move it around. One, two, two. Smith on the high post to Burns. Kick it out, three-pointer on the way. Yes, oh, I hate to see that. You play good defense. Quinton Smith hits the scoring column for the first time tonight. Good execution. Hadn't been in the scoring column, but when it came time to take a big shot, he nailed it. Bauer looking for Simon. Instead flips it all the way across to Henderson. 18 in the shot clock. Keon. That's by Kelly. Thrasher can't find Simon, gives instead to Cowan. Spin move, shake big, right, left. Cowan's got away with the charge. Got an offensive rebound, banks it up and in. And Simon got away with it over the back. Tap, great presence of mind to try to tap it to Collins. And good job getting away with the personal foul over the back. 56-46, lead is 10 at 13 minutes to go. Again, Eagles patiently passing on the perimeter. Marks, 12-footer. Gets the friendly roll. Chess Marks now with seven points. 12.44 to go. It's a 12-point Moorhead State lead. Thrasher, lob pass for Simon, and David's fouled underneath before the shot. See they call the foul on. Fouls on Corey Burns. His second, his fourth. Nice inbound. Simon gets his second field goal of the second half. 58-48 our score. Now it's time for the defense to come to the front if you're an IPFW fan. Ooh, nice pick by Graham and Ricky Menard makes him pay. And once again, that is not the guy, who, whoever's guarding Menard, that's not their fault. The person guarding the guy setting the pick has to communicate and also not only communicate, but step out and stop that shooter or penetration. On that occasion, it was Bauer that got picked by Graham. Nice pick by Josh Graham. More hit state there due. 16 on the shot clock. Collins for three. Yes. Terry Collins with the second tray of the night. Now 60 to 51 as we're under 12 minutes. The Dons can't trade baskets. They gotta play some D. Smith for three. Look out. Quentin Smith, the second tray of the second half. And we're back up to a 12-point game again. Give them credit. Every time the Dons come, come a-calling, they answer. Collins and Marks doing battle. Mano a mano. Thrasher, turnaround jumper, yes. Good job that time by Thrasher. Catching that basketball in rhythm, turning and shooting. Shots go down a lot quicker if you get in rhythm. First bucket of the night for Thrasher on the feed from Terry Collins. Again, it's a 10-point game as we go under 11 minutes. Chez Marks at the top of the key. 18 in the shot clock. McKnight's back in the game. Menard inside feet. Knocked away by Simon. It'll still be Moorhead's ball, but nice recognition by Dave Simon. Great recognition. Uh, there, was, there was a good screen by Moorhead State and then a cut to the basket. Great job by Simon, as you stated, stepping in and knocking that pass away. We've got a timeout on the floor. 10.42 left. 63-53 our score equals on top. Gives us a chance to invite you to learn more about Mastodon Sports by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday here on College 56. Here's truly Mike Miles. We'll review the recent sport activities. We look at game footage and visit with coaches and student athletes. And that's Mastodon Spotlight now in our fifth year. Wednesdays at 11.30 p.m., Fridays at 6.30 p.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. right here on College 56 Sports. You see some of the turnout here tonight at the Coliseum. 10.42 left, Charlie. It's a 10-point game. 11 seconds on the shot clock for Moorhead State. 
Oh, how critical is it for IPFW to play some defense? Well, they've come out in the last couple of minutes. They started to play uh, much better as we see um, a replay. And you see Moorhead just working the ball on yeah. a perimeter. Good motion, setting screens. And the downs are getting caught with uh, poor communication. And that time, had a little breakdown, yep. but Simon uh, stepped in. Menard uh, was trying to hit McKnight, and Simon got that big mid of his yeah. in the way. Uh, the downs have been playing well as of late, but they're trading baskets. And right. uh, at this juncture of the game, you can't trade baskets. You know, they're playing well, but you got that defense has to get going. Right now, Moorhead State hitting 57% of their shots, 24 of 42. IPFW, 50%, 21 of 42. Hawkins in the lineup for the Mastodons. Again, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Smith will inbound it for Moorhead. Gets it to Menard. Menard, oh, what smooth move. Misses the shot, Hawkins with the rebound. There's the defense. Now can they convert some offense? Hawkins, wide open, doesn't take a three. I think he was a step out of his range. He did catch it in rhythm and once again, a little bit further than he'd uh, like to take it. Simon double teamed, kicks back out to Collins, two-man game. Simon turnaround shot, gets the friendly bounce, no tap, no good. And Thrasher's gonna be called for fouling Josh Graham. A nice catch though, inside, outside, you know, motion. And nice turnaround, looked like uh, Simon was in good rhythm and just didn't fall down for him. Second foul on Thrasher, four, a third on the team here in the second half. And we're near the midway mark of the second half. It's a 10-point game, 63-53. Smith had it knocked away by Bauer. Good defensive play by Bauer. Inside pass, Simon, look out for the, oh! He went up for the jam, got fouled by McKnight. Wish we could have seen Simon a little bit earlier. That uh, We need that momentum, the two points and the momentum. Would have worked well in uh, the Don's favor. Foul, I believe, was on Graham. That'll be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, McKnight, McKnight. It is his third, five and 50, one gets up uh, confused. You know me, Charlie. <laughs> David Simon knocks the first free throw down. And he's got five points in the second half now, 14 in the game. Three Dons are in double figures. Collins 16, Simon 14, and Bo Bauer with 11. But Dons have to make the free throw right now. And he does. Kesnick did not get to the scorer's table in time, so he'll have to wait for the next dead ball. It's an eight point lead for Moorhead State, 63-55, 9.50 to go. Hankins in the lineup. Watched by Bauer. Marks inside for McKnight. Give and go. Hankins looking for a cutter. Graham on Simon, lost the ball out of bounds. Turnover, Moorhead State. Good play, David Simon not moving his feet. Right, and I tell you what, uh, this offense does not run as effectively with Hankins uh, in, in the basketball game. No disrespect uh, to him, but simply th their offense is not as smooth. In Bonnie at Wyan back in the game. Bauer, Hawkins, Kesnick, and Collins. The lead is eight for Moorhead State. The Dons have the basketball. And 20 to go. Kesnick on the right wing. 17 on the shot clock. Dons looking for a good shot, looking for a cutter. Wyant. Driving, oh, nice feed to Kesnick. Great pass, great look that time by Wyan. Four points for Kesnick, great feed from Wyan. It's down to six points, 63-57. March comes back, misses the shot, Bauer with the board. Now this crowd at the Coliseum starting to get into it. If the Dons can score here, they should go nuts. Collins for three, no, rebound McKnight. Boy, that clanked off the back of the iron, that wasn't far from me. A made three-pointer. And, and, and that's what you want, taking the shot. You want Collins, he looked to be in rhythm, taking that kind of shot. That's what you want if you're a Don fan. Moorhead State calls a 30-second timeout with 8.36 to go. 
Eagles have three timeouts left, one full, 220. We'll take a break. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Back at the Coliseum, Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you, 836 left. It's Moorhead State 63, IPFW 57. Dan's on a 4 0 run right now. And you need to stop right now and go on a good scoring opportunity when you get possession. Keep Uncle Mo on your side. Menard is their go to guy. Instead, they throw it away. Oh, they say touched by IPFW. Boy, Collins waving his arms. He doesn't believe the call. 18 in the shot clock. Hankins a wind bound it. Dons need another stop. Inside, Graham! Charging foul on Graham! Great step in that time by Bo Bauer. And once again, Graham, he's a pretty big fella. I don't know if I'd want to step in there and take a charge. Second foul on Graham. Sixth team foul. With 8.23 to go, the next foul on uh, Moorhead will bring IPFW to the line. Bauer up over midcourt. Dons down by six. Hawkins watched by Menard. That's an interesting matchup. Senior guarding a freshman. Now we got a foul on Ricky Menard, I believe. That's the first foul tonight on Ricky Menard. But it sends Justin Hawkins to the line. One in the bonus and an opportunity to score with no time off on the clock, Charlie. Boy, you can't ask for an early Christmas present like that. Hey, and what else is happening also? When Kelly went out of the basketball game, I stated that this offense is not running smooth with him at the helm. And uh, that's how the Dons, I think, one of the keys to the Dons creeping back in. But we just had, a, might as well be a turnover right there. I missed Hawk one missed one. the free throw. Menard misses the shot. Coming back, Collins with the board. Here comes the junior from Fort Wayne, Snyder. Work it around. Let me look for Collins in the corner. Hawkins, 6-7, watched by Menard. Well, Mike, just like you can't trade baskets, you can't trade missed shots and turnovers either. Wine in the block, double team, no spin move, force the shot up and gets it! It might have been bumped. I don't know if he just lost control of the ball or if he got bumped, but either way, we'll take the two. It's down to a four-point lead for Moorhead, 63-59 as we're under seven and a half minutes to go. Keep Kelly on the bench, Kyle Macy. <laughs> Somebody watch Menard. It's Hawkins on Menard right now. Hankins watched by Bauer. The Don's still in a man-to-man -man defense. Shaking big time, Menard. They say he's fouled. Kesnick called for his first foul tonight. I if we got a replay on that. First foul on Kesnick fourth team foul but Menard would go to the line to shoot two. Ricky Menard came into the contest hitting 70 percent of his free throws and tonight he's a little bit better than that seven of eight for 88 percent. He's a good looking ball player you know Mike and I tell you he's got some life after Moorhead State. I'm, I'm not saying it, it'd be at the NBA level but he has some life uh, in the basketball field after Moorhead. Makes them both. And we have a timeout on the floor. So a 7.09 left. It's the Eagle 65, the Mastodons 59. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 
Back at the Coliseum, Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. We are down to the 7.09 mark. The visitors from Kentucky, Moorhead State leading the Mastodons from IPFW 65-59. Charlie Washington, we said off air, these are some of the smoothest 31 points that Ricky Minard has scored probably all year. Yeah, and it looked like just on that last play, he kind of got a bailout call from uh, the referee. A little bit out of control and off balance, but he got the benefit of the call. And I guess if you score 22 points in the first half, I guess you get those kind of calls. Well, I found out uh, during the intermission at halftime that Menard nearly turned pro and decided at the last moment to come back for his senior year. Shame, shame, Ricky Menard. <laughs> right, yes, shame, shame, shame. Yeah, for IPFW. I'm, I just stated a, a moment ago he has life after Moorhead, but uh, I'm not sure, you know, that level, NBA level, but certainly uh, somewhere. Don's inbounded. Collins, Bauer, Wyant, Hawkins, and Simon. And they put that token, seem, seemingly token, 2-2-1 two, two, pressure on. They had taken it off a while. Collins with a basketball, looking for a two-man game with Simon. Looking for anybody in white now. 15 on the shot clock, Bowers got it back. He goes on a man-to-man defense. Collins on Hankins, fair game. Hawkins for three, off the rim, no. That's a big opportunity, a big opportunity missed right there for the Dons. All you pulled the rebound down, here comes Moorhead State. Dons need a stop. Cut it to four. Mark blocked by Simon. Race for the ball. Recovered by Menard. And he goes back. Shot clock hasn't gone off, so it's 12 seconds left. Inside feed and a traveling call. Traveling call on McKnight. He tried to draw Simon's third foul. Instead, it's the 13th turnover. A great hustle that time by Simon getting back in the play, into the play, an even greater job not making that foul. 65-59 our scores when you're the six minute mark. Don's down by six, need a bucket. A two possession game right now. Bauer all the way, and he is fouled going up and he hits the floor hard. Freshman should shoot two. Hankins draws the foul, that's Kyle's third. Team eight. Bo Bauer missed his only previous attempt tonight. Knocks that one down, however. Every free throw critical now with 5.57 to go. Henderson back in the Mastodon lineup replacing Hawkins. One more free throw coming for Bo Bauer. Chance to cut the lead to four, and he does. And Macy has finally taken Hankins um, out of the basketball game, much to my dismay. Bauer will sit on the bench, replaced by Tyler Clevenger. 65-61, Eagles with the lead in the basketball. Menard, got a feeling he's gonna have his hands on the ball most of the rest of the way. McKnight underneath, shot missed, Wyan with the rebound for IPSW. And great job that time by Wyan stepping out on that pick, just what we talked about a while ago. Collins inside for Simon. Nice feed, Henderson underneath. Keon goes up for the shot, draws the foul. I think he's actually trying to find Collins on a pass for the other. Well, he fumbled the first pass. I would have loved to have seen him catch that pass in rhythm and, and watch the fireworks as he would tear to try to tear the rim down. And I hope he's not hurt. Fouls on Graham, his third, team ninth. Henderson at the line shooting two. There's the replay, Charlie. Now that's the earlier replay earlier, on that's right. Earlier replay when Bauer. Bauer got fouled. And Henderson, seven points so far tonight. Continues being perfect at the lines. Now five of five for the year. Graham in the lineup replacing McKnight for Moorhead State. And once again, Mike, glad to see Keon not hurt. He's just had an injury riddled career. Second free throw, also good. Henderson makes them both. He'll sit down, replaced by Hawkins. 5.32 to go, it's 65-63, the lead down to two. And here comes Moorhead State with the basketball. Crowd into it now here at the Coliseum. 
They have a chance at defense in the background. All you. Eagles on the perimeter are gonna look for a backdoor cut. Menard could be shaking big time. 12 on a shot clock. Graham watched by Wyan. Menard says, clear him out, boys. It's me in the world. 10-footer shot. No! Rebound Simon! Down for the chance to tie her, maybe go ahead. Collins nearly lost it. You just have to run the offense now. 4.45 to go. Let's get it inside to Simon. Get it inside to the big fella. Skip pass to Collins. Fires a three. Yes! Just like I stated. Get it to Terry Collins and shoot the three. Just like I just said. Collins take the lead. 66-65. 4.27 to go. All you off the block. No! Clevenger fights for the rebound. He says, I've got it. Not you, Mr. Graham. Pass knocked out of bounds by Menard. Great job. It on ball. Great job. David Simon is starting to get in some respect from the referees. Another close play. Could have been a foul. Didn't get the foul. Got the rebound. And tipped it there. Somehow Clevenger got it and held on strong to it. Clevenger a win found it. 4-16 on the game clock. Don's up by one. Clevenger rather going to look either for Simon or Wyan. Bounce pass into Wyan inside. Before the shot is taken, foul is called. Marks called for the foul. Wyan will shoot two. Marks brings up his first foul of the game. It's the 10th team foul. So last 405 double bonus for the Mastodons. Rick Wyan, 89% at the line, makes the first. Bauer in for Clevenger. The two-point Mastodon lead, 67-65. Great job by Clevenger. Um, the Don's kind of crept right back into it while he was in the game. Missed free throw, but Hawkins with the offensive board. Wyatt trying to hit Simon, stolen instead by all you. That comes, Moorhead State, and Kyle Macy calls a 30-second timeout. With 3.56 to go, and the Eagles train by two. Let's take a break. You're watching IPFW Basketball on Power 56 Sports. Back at the Coliseum, we see a repo. Watch Clevenger just fight Graham off on that rebound. Showing some guts. Play back in. Marks with it. Uh, sorry, Smith, out of Menard. Watch by Hawkins inside feet. Graham. Graham misses the shot, but draws the foul. They're going to say Bauer fouled Graham. Or is it Wyan? I'm not sure, but I think it was one of those anticipated calls. I don't think there was much contact, but with that kind of a play, you're going to anticipate that foul as we see. We're going to call Bauer for the foul, his first. I didn't see much contact. Josh Gray on the line, one of two tonight. First one up and in. You know, I stated earlier, you know, Mike, that Hawkins on Menard wasn't a very good matchup, but he's not done that bad of a job. Chance to tie, misses, rebound Menard, off the glass, no, tap up, no! Truthfully, I'm not sure who's going to get credit. Doug Noel really upset. And I think there may be, well, the officials, Officials are going to talk it over. We've got a timeout on the floor. Oh, they're going to say no basket. Doug Knowles stated that um, 
Number five, Graham. I think I'm getting the name right. Graham grabbed the rim. I'm not the rim. Actually, it wasn't the rim. It was the net and pulled it down instead of Simon. And the replay looks like it very well could have been that. Take away the basket. It's still a one-point lead. There is a timeout on the floor with 3.41 to go. the most demonstrative we see Doug Nolan in a while, Charlie. Well, in a game like this, and then when you're on a roll and you're needing to win, and a roll, you need a two-game win streak, hey. We're going to see that replay again here momentarily, I do believe. Hey, we're not, we're not going to see the replay right now, I'm not sure. But in any event, play's about to begin. It'll be IPFW basketball. Wyatt will inbound it. Wyatt, Bauer, Hawkins, Collins, and Simon on the floor for IPFW. All you, Smith, Marks, Graham, and Menard on the floor for Moorhead State. Oh, the Dobbs got away with one. Wyatt moved on the inbounds pass. Yeah, on a dead ball, you can't on do that. On a dead ball. Early Christmas present courtesy of the Zebras. Collins up top to Bauer. Hawkins drives, lots it up and again. Nice, nice stop. Full speed and stopping on a dime. Great job that time by Hawkins, the Garrett native. First points of the night coming a great time. He's at the lead to three. We tend to go. Inside feet knocked away. Good defense. Good help defense that time. Now the Dons want to slow it down. Three minutes to go. The lead is three, 69-66. Collins watched by Marks. Wyatt for three. Yes. Yes. Now he's in the game. Eight points for Rick Wyatt. And now it's a 72-66 IPFW lead. Graham looking to Coach Macy for some instructions. 2.38 to go. Menard, watched by Hawkins. 16-footer on the way. No, rebound, Simon. And he's going cold at the right time. And some of that coldness is due to the pretty good, darn good defense by Hawkins. 2.22 to go. The lead is six for IPFW. Hawkins, freshman on the floor to another freshman, Bauer. Confidence by Doug Nolan, the underclassman. Ball knocked, nearly knocked away. Bauer recovers it. All you nearly had the steal. Ten on the shot clock, 2.05 on the game clock. Collins looking for a pick, pick and roll. Three pointer. No. Rebound Simon. Down to reload with 154 to go. Use that clock. Use the clock. Bauer to Wyant. 148 to go. Six point Mastodon lead. Timeout called by IPFW, 30-second timeout with 1.44 to go. Momentum wearing blue and white right now. Uncle Mo is definitely on the Don side. And right now you have the basketball and you have David Simon. You can do more than just sit on the sidelines, participate in the excitement of Mastodon Athletics by joining the Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons is IPFW's official athletic booster organization. Members enjoy priority seating at IPFW sports events, visits by the coaches, and food and refreshment in the hospitality room. For more information about the Royal Dimes, call 260-481-6643, or you can write to the Royal Dimes Club, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, 14, Fort Wayne, rather, Indiana, 46805, or go on the IPFW website at www.ipfw.edu slash athletics. Offensive rebound by Simon there on the replay. Back to the live action. Bauer watched by Smith. 
Look inside. Good look inside. Collins looking for Wyant on the block. Wyant brings it back out. Collins, nearly a foul by Marks. Five on the shot clock. Collins. Hawkins for three. No. Simon kicks it out to Marks. Here comes Moorhead State. Chad Marks kicks it out to Smith. We're going to look down low. Oh, you misses. Rebound, IPFW. Bauer with it. 105 to go. The clock is your friend. The clock is your friend right now. Reach in foul by Menard. Bo Bauer to the line, shooting two. For uh, Ricky Menard, that's his second personal. Comes with 61 seconds left in the contest. Bo Bauer, two of three so far tonight at the line. That's at the line for double two. Double bonus. Bauer, 67% foul shooter coming in, knocks down the first one. That makes it a three possession game, 73-66. Second free throw, short, rebounded by Graham. Here come the Eagles with under a minute to go. Menard, he can't find somebody down low, he'll probably pop a three. There's your three, yes. Menard, 34 points. 73-69 with 40 seconds to go. Wyant, pass, good pass from Collins. Bauer fouled by Marks. Collins had the strength and the presence of mind combined. He was going to make the pass and saw the defender getting ready to shoot into that passing lane. Had the strength and presence of mind to skip it all on over to uh, Wyant. Bauer back at the strike, first one good. Bauer now with 15 points. Chance to give the Dons another six point lead. And he does. 36 seconds to go. Marks a three, no good. Rebounded by Ryan. And he calls it final IPFW timeout. A full 60 second timeout with 29.3 seconds to go. And that's a great, even though that's the last uh, timeout, great decision that time because you want the basketball clock is your friend and you're going to get fouled. 75-69 our score. IPFW on top. They trailed at halftime 40-36. to Clevenger checks back in the lineup and I hope Charlie that Fred Andrews knows and tells the rest of the staff that no more timeouts for IPFW because if they call one it's a technical foul. Exactly. Then you get the ball back. Now, but you put Clevenger in the game, but you want your ball handlers in the basketball game. They are going to get fouled, and you need to have more options. But they're going to be playing some pretty hard, pressurized defense. Oh, there's Don, the mascot. Don's trying to win their second in a row. At home, they're one and two, and they're usually could be two and one. They lost that tough, heartbreaking game to Kent State on a 40-40 with 1.1 seconds to go. Back. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. They defeated Bowling Green Wednesday night. After the game tonight, they take on the Purdue Boilermakers at Mackey Arena one week from today. Well, I'll tell you what, a win like this at least gives you the momentum. We don't know what's gonna happen down there in Mackey, but we'll, we will have some momentum going in there at least. It'll be IPFW basketball, Collins, Wyan, Clevenger, Simon and Bauer on the floor. Graham, Menard, Smith, all you, and Marks on the floor for Moorhead State. Full court pressure, Graham on the ball. There you see Doug Knoll sorting his charges. The Dons love this Memorial Coliseum setting, Charlie. Wyatt to inbound. Wyatt to inbound. Knock it out. Downs might have caught a break on that. Again, Wyant can't move. He got away with it a while earlier. Bounce past the ball. They lost it. Quick three shot missed. Tap up. No good. Tap. Again, Menard gets it. Caught the bucket and he's fouled. Clevenger draws the foul. 
The bad thing about that, Mike, not much time ran off the clock. Menard makes the bucket. He now has 36 points, make it 37. The free throw is good. Henderson back on the floor for the Dons, re replacing Simon. I'm going to guess it's for uh, ball handling. Handling and free throw shooting. And we have to look at more of an option than just trying to force the ball into Bauer in the corner. 23.9 seconds left. Collins gets the ball. Double team gets it to Bauer over midcourt. And he's knocked away. Loose ball picked up by Bauer. Good play, Keon Henderson. And now a foul is called with 15.3 seconds to go. March commits the third foul, but give the senior Keon Henderson credit, Charlie, for keeping that ball alive. Well, he's played a great floor game. Um, you see the ball knocked out of the hands, and watch Keon right there. It's almost going out of bounds. He tosses it in the air. Bauer's able to get it, and then he draws the foul. It's a great decision once he went for it. It looked like it would have been Don's possession if he had just let the basketball go. But at the same time, he made the decision to go for it. First free throw missed. It's a three-point game with 15.3 seconds to go. Offense, defense. Simon and Hawkins back on the floor. Henderson Clevenger sit down. Bauer needs to make this free throw to make it a two-possession game. This ball game is nowhere near over, folks. The freshman Bo Bauer at the stripe. Fires. Hits! At least now it's a two-possession game. That free throw at least put it for two possessions. Smith over midcourt looking for Menard. Fires a three instead. No good. Rebounded by Graham. Marks forces up a three. They call it. No. Phil Bova says he got the timeout all before IPFW inbounded the ball. It is 76. Is it 74 or They're 75? Debating. They're debating whether it was a two or a three. The score was 72, and uh, it looked like the call was two. Emphatically, the referee called a two-point shot. Phil Bova, the head official, talking to Kyle Macy. Right away, he signaled two-point shot. Macy leading his case for a three. Now Boba's going to talk with his other officials, John Yorkovich and Bill Martinez. And I'm not sure we would have that type of an angle on our replay. They're going to ask us. They're coming over to us and asking us. Take that back. Take that back. Okay. They're trying. Well, the officials came over to our monitor hoping that we might have the replay. Unfortunately, one of those unique circumstances, we don't have it. So now the three officials are conferring. They've sent both teams to their respective benches. And uh, again, Kyle Macy trying to plead his case, saying that it was a three-point shot. They originally ruled it a two, and what it means it's either 76-74 IPFW or 76-75 with 4.3 seconds left. It, it looked, excuse me, Mike, it looked as though the referee closest to the play and whose call it would have been emphatically right away called the shot a two-point shot. Bill Bova talking to the official score right now. <laughs> uh, 
Well, now they're getting both head coaches together. Awkward yet difficult situation for, for everybody involved. And Phil Bova talking to Doug Noll and Kyle Macy. They, again, as you said, Charlie, they originally called it a two. And then before IPFW could inbound it, Moorhead State called a timeout. 4.3 seconds to go. And I believe they're going to leave it as a two. Well, and the timeout itself was uh, pretty questionable. I'm not saying uh, Macy did not signal for the timeout, but Rick Wyan had already had the basketball and was running the baseline looking for someone to throw the basketball into. The next question that comes up, I think there was a fraction. There we go. There we saw the replay. Shot went in, but I think he crossed the line. Try to get. Right now, we've got the, we're going to show the replay. Again. Play it again. Let me see the time. And Phil Bova looking at it. it again for the officials to look at it. And you can see Marks tries to drive into Hawkins. And I'm not sure it's conclusive. The question comes up now, could it have been an offensive foul on Marks? Charlie, I don't know, looking at that, uh, we had a chance to do it a couple of times. I'm not sure, two or three. A forced three, let's put it that way. If I had to make a call on it, based on not being able to see exactly where his feet, uh, where his feet were when he left the ground, but it looked, from what we see, like it could have been a three. Well, the first look on Doug Noll's face almost makes me think that Bova may change it to a three. Again, 4.3 seconds left. And the, the key issue here is whether it's a one-point game or a two-point game. Now, Bova's talking to Kyle Macy again. Fans are getting restless here at the Coliseum, but you wonder, well, what's the difference between a one or a two? It's very simple. If it's a two-point game and Morehead State fouls and IPFW makes both free throws, it's a four-point or two-possession game. If they call it that's, uh, the other way, chance for it to be a three-point. And now, another discussion. Let's see what Phil Bowman's decision is going to be. And talking to Doug Knoll. They're going to call it a three. Call it a three by Marks. They'll make it 76 75. Clevenger will win down it for the Dons. Here we go. 4.3 seconds to go. Dons up by one. Clevenger want to find somebody to get to Collins. Collins fouled immediately with 3.2 seconds to go. Bowers on Smith, here's third. Terry Collins at the line, he's four of four so far tonight. 
And they do have one timeout left. Yes, Warrior State has one. IPFW is out. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, a couple of minutes ago, we were breathing pretty easy here with, uh, I think, a seven-point lead with about two minutes to go. Terry Collins at the line for two. Here we go. Too much time. See what Terry's made of. Junior from Snyder High School. First one. Yes. That makes it a two-point game. Warhead State calls their last timeout. Again, 3.2 seconds left. 3.2 left. 77-75. Mastodon's up by two. And one more free throw coming. Oh, what do you say on either bench, Charlie? Well, this free throw is going to, you know, a lot's going to depend on the free throw. And I don't know what, if anything, Coach Noel is saying to uh, Terry Collins. But Terry's a veteran and has been through a lot of um, tough wars in high school as well as on the coll collegiate level. So a lot's going to depend on it. If that shot goes in, you're saying do not give up a three-point shot and do not foul a three-point shooter. That's going to be crucial. 3.2 seconds. I know Doug has told me in practice his team can go the length of the floor in 3.2 seconds or so three seconds. Well, we see Menard go uh, yeah. tonight. We've seen him go on the dribble uh, down the court in that length of time. And you would think that if they go ahead and get the ball, they want it to Menard hands. He's got 37 points, three of eight from three-point range. Quick look, three-point shooting. Menard 44%. Marks 44%, Smith 42% on the year, Hankins 40%. But you got to think it's either going to be number 24 or number three taking that last shot. But right now it's critical. Terry Collins, one big free throw. And those numbers you just threw out, uh, Mike, are very impressive. 40. Anytime you say 40, anything on three-point shots, very good. Free throw coming. Here it goes. Got it. Now, do not give up a three-point shot and definitely don't foul the three-point shooter. Menard's going to take it. Mid-court. Let's it go. Short. Got to win. 78-75. IPFW wins their second in a row. What a finish. Menard got the ball, got up the floor, and he had a good look at the basket, Charlie. I might have even looked at fouling him before he got there. <laughs> the way he's played the, tonight. Oh, real quickly. IPFW, Collins 21, Bauer 17, Simon 15. Game high scoring, Ricky Menard 37 points. Final comments, Charlie Washington. Great job for the Dons, gutting this win out. Uh, they hung in there, they crept back into the game. Got down double figures, crept back into it, and we looked up, that they're down three. So great job by the Dons, they did what they had to do. The balance scoring, Simon played a great game, Bauer controlled the tempo of the game. Great job by the Dons tonight. A reminder, tune in to College 56 Thursday evening, December 18th at 9 o'clock, or next Saturday, December 20th at 7 o'clock for the replay of this exciting men's basketball game with Moorhead State. Again, that's right here on College 56 Sports. Well, at this time, we'd like to thank the College 56 production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cable Vision, the IPFW Learning Resource Center, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College 56 Sports telecast. Briefly, coming up ahead, Tuesday, December 23rd, women's basketball against Indiana State at 7 o'clock. And then on Saturday, January 3rd, the same, uh, same men's team, Doug Knowles' team, will take on Texas A&M Corpus Christi at 1 p.m. Those are our next two live sports telecasts. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. We really hope you've enjoyed this telecast of IPFW Sports and the final outcome as well. We thank you again for joining us this evening. For Charlie Washington, this is Mike Moss saying so long for now. Once again, our final score tonight. The IPFW Mastodons 78, the Moorhead State Eagles 75. 
Until our next broadcast, we wish you a pleasant good evening from the Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana.